Hello, welcome to this second video covering the simple overview of British America in line with edXL uh, History GCSE. If you haven't watched the first one of these videos yet, it's linked above now. This video is going to give you an overview of the disruptions of British America between 1742 and 64. Just like the last video, watch until the end for some questions to check your knowledge and understanding. This 20 year period then sees British America face key challenges. New forms of Protestantism divide the colonists and we see relationships between Britain and British America start to divide as a result of this. Enlightenment figures like Ben Franklin challenge old ways of doing things and importantly two wars with France break out in North America in both 1744 and 1754, both of these about disputes over land. The French and Indian War, so that's the second of these, is won by Britain, which removes the French threat, but it's expensive and it increases tensions with the colonists and with Native Americans as well. Fantastic. Let's have a look at this then in a little bit more detail, starting with the religious revivals and the Enlightenment. The Great Awakening then, is an example of this religious revival. It sees evangelical, dramatic styles of preaching which draws large crowds and helps to weaken the traditional church and divide society. The Enlightenment itself is an intellectual movement that spans across the globe. It prioritises experimentation, reasoning and this idea of natural rights. It influences British America in a couple of key ways. It sees more colleges and schools, as well as information spread via newspapers, pamphlets and subscription libraries. A key Enlightenment figure is Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin edits newspapers and writes Poor Richard's Almanac, as well as his work as a philanthropist contributing to society via introducing fire insurance, subscription libraries and a city hospital within his hometown of Philadelphia. Furthermore, he's also an inventor and scientist. He founded the Philosophical Society and is noted for inventions like the lightning rod, which he develops in 1753. Let's have a look then at the first big conflict of this time frame, which is King George's War. The cause of King George's War then between Britain and France are all around disputed land in the Ohio County. Both uh, countries want to own this land, want to control it in order to profit from the fur trade. Britain doesn't do particularly well initially, but a major victory is the capture of Fort Louisbourg, which takes lots of lots of lives from both British soldiers and the colonists. The British are negotiating, as are the French, with Native Americans, and in 1747, the Iroquois, a notable Native American tribe, agree to join the British effort against the French. However, a peace treaty is signed before they can really shift the balance. The peace treaty that's signed is the Treaty of Aix la Chapelle, which essentially takes everything back to how it was at the very, very start. The causes are still there, and this will bubble up again in 1754. In 1754, for much the same reasons as King George's War, another conflict breaks out. This one is known as the French and Indian War. Britain, again, doesn't start well. It loses notable conflicts with the French around Fort Duquesne and Fort Necessity. But a key turning point is the introduction of William Pitt as British Prime Minister. He invests much more money, uh, he gives more soldiers towards the war effort, and as a result, British successes follow. They take numerous French forts, taking control of the Ohio County by 1758. A notable figure of this time is General Wolfe. After the control of the Ohio County, attention shifts towards Canada and he's able to take Quebec in 1759, unfortunately for him, dying in the process. In the aftermath of the French and Indian War then, there are a few key consequences. The first of these is the Peace Treaty, which brings the war to the end, which is the Treaty of Paris signed in 1763. There are some good things here for the colonists, it removes the French threat, but it's also some things which they take umbrage with. This in particular is the proclamation line, which declares that British colonists will stay east of a certain line and won't try and settle any further west of that, because that land will be left for Native Americans. The war damages relationships between Britain and British America further because of fallings out between troops, but mostly because of the huge debt that Britain has incurred in fighting this conflict. 
in order to try and recoup some of the expenses, Britain introduces a tax called the Sugar Act in 1764. This is an attempt to raise money from colonists, but there are protests and very little is collected. The idea of raising money from the colonists doesn't go away though, and this will feature a lot in our next uh, video where we look at what happens after this period. There are a couple of other skirmishes and conflicts you need to be aware of. One of these is Pontiac's Rebellion. This is Native American attacks on the British spanning from 1763 through to 1766. There are also examples of colonists themselves attacking Native Americans and the prime example of this is the Paxton Boys. They're a militia that massacre peaceful Native Americans in 1763 and then try again in 1764. The impact of these conflicts, well, relationships between Britain and the Native Americans don't really improve. Without the French there to play off against with the Native Americans, relationships slip and peace talks at the end of Pontiac's Rebellion are particularly hard. And there we go. Breathe. That then is the revivalists, the Enlightenment, and the various wars against the French in North America between 1742 and 64. What I'm putting up on your screen for you now is a few questions. If you want to pause the video now, you can quiz yourselves on these. All of the answers have been covered in the previous five minutes. On your screen now, you've got my final graphic, but also a couple of extra links if you would like to see the earlier video in this series. Subscribe if you're looking for more content or exam technique. I really do hope that you found this video useful. If you've got any questions for me about any of the content covered, please do let me know in the comments. For now, can I say thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.